In an abandoned factory, two boys accidentally open the cover of a pickle vat. Then a man who has been pickled for 100 years is awakened. It turns out that 100 years ago Herschel was a worker in this pickle factory. But one day, he accidentally fell into the pickle vat. Unfortunately, the pickle factory was suddenly closed for health reasons, and Herschel has been sealed in the pickle vat since then. Until now, 100 years later, he is accidentally awakened by these two young boys. To explain to the public how Herschel survived, scientists even show them a documentary. Uh, here's something that's never happened before. I'm a pickle! I'm Pickle Rick! When he learns that his wife has been dead for 80 years, he cannot accept the fact. After a while, the scientists tell Herschel a piece of good news. They have found that Herschel still has a relative alive, his great-grandson Ben. Except for the beard, the two look very much alike. The two hug each other in excitement when they meet for the first time. Ben then takes Herschel out of the hospital, where Herschel finds that the world has completely changed, and everything he knew is gone. He almost punches a cab. At his request, Ben takes him to his wife's grave. It was once a beautiful cemetery, but now it's almost a junkyard. Herschel finally finds his wife's gravestone, but suddenly a pile of filth from a billboard falls on it, which makes Herschel very sad. He asks Ben to join him in praying for the family. Just then, some workers come over to replace the ad. Herschel demands them to remove the entire billboard, but apparently, they won't listen to him. He threw a few punches to knock the workers down. The two are soon arrested for this and taken to the police station. Later, Ben spends all his savings to pay off the bail. Back home, Ben criticizes his great-grandfather for his reckless behavior. Herschel is very angry, saying that Ben has no respect for his elder and no family honor at all. So Herschel leaves Ben's apartment, he wants to make money, he wants to build a pickle empire. Being broke, Herschel couldn't afford to buy the ingredients. So he tries to find some in the dumpster, and he actually finds some cucumbers and salt. Then he collects some discarded parts, which he uses to assemble into a small pushcart. He cleans the cucumbers, puts them in used glass jars, and now all he has to do is wait for the rain and bird poop to fill them up. This is a 100-year-old recipe, and Herschel calls it rainwater pickles, aka bird poop pickles. Times change, but people's desire for delicious food remains the same. Herschel's rainwater pickles are so popular that he even has reporters coming over to interview him. He is happy with his success, and then he mocks Ben for being a loser in front of the camera. Herschel's success makes Ben jealous. Ben is an app developer, and he was arrested once for Herschel, the record makes it hard for Ben to get new investments. And now Herschel is actually laughing at him. In revenge, Ben reports Herschel's bird poop pickles to the health department. Hello? Health department? I'd like to file a complaint. The officers soon find Herschel and order him to stop business immediately, with a fine of $12,000. After learning the truth, people come to boycott him, and Herschel is overwhelmed. Fortunately, two of his regular customers give him an idea, they suggest that he get some interns from the university to help his business. Not only does he not have to pay the interns, but he can also mass produce pickles that meet hygiene standards. It works very well, and the quality of the products is soon upgraded. Tens of thousands of pickles are reintroduced to the market, and with the help of the interns, the pickles are quickly sold out. Herschel makes a fortune, and he immediately buys the billboard next to his wife's grave and takes it down, defending the family's dignity. Later, many investors approach Herschel, they are willing to invest millions of dollars to help him build a pickle empire. Seeing that Herschel has become a famous entrepreneur, Ben gets even more jealous. On this day, Herschel comes to Ben's apartment and brags to Ben about his success. Ben takes the opportunity to recommend Twitter to Herschel, saying that he should use Twitter to get followers so that he can better promote his pickles. Herschel accepts Ben's suggestion. At night, Herschel asks his assistant to help him post some of his views on Twitter, well, some views from 100 years ago. As a result, he receives a lot of condemnation for discriminating against women, and even his assistant turns against him. However, part of his views gain support from some conservatives, who see Herschel as an outspoken advocate of free speech. Later, he is invited to participate in a national TV debate. And Ben, in disguise, asks Herschel a trap question about Christianity. Unsurprisingly, Herschel screws up, his views are the exact opposite of the mainstream, and everyone is condemning him. What's worse is that the government wants to deport Herschel, because they consider him to be an illegal immigrant. Herschel flees to Ben's apartment and asks Ben to help him escape to Canada, and Ben agrees. Just as they are about to cross the borderline, Ben confesses his mistakes to Herschel. After Herschel learns that Ben has been setting him up, he knocks Ben down. Just then, the border guards happen to pass by. Herschel hurriedly shaves his beard, puts on Ben's clothes, and fools the border guards. Then Herschel returns to New York and continues to pose as Ben. Ben, on the other hand, is arrested. Since all of Ben's belongings were taken away, he could not prove himself. Then Ben is treated as Herschel and deported to Eastern Europe. 
Ben is penniless and he doesn't know the local language, he has no idea what to do next. Ben comes to a church to pray, regretting his actions of setting Herschel up and disrespecting his family. Unexpectedly, Herschel finds him. The two of them decide to put aside their differences, after all, they are family. In the end, the two of them agree to build their pickle empire together. I am Movie Ape, thanks for watching.